Okay, we have Bloodlust, of course. It's right on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it, Bloodlust? Genocide Jack. Let's, uh, Once again, the, this, it has some blood on it, too. It must have happened during the murder. Right. Okay, so... There's some blood on the poster. I'm gonna nice. say Chihiro was, like, standing right here, and someone smacked her from behind. She must have not instantly... Well, no, so she was standing it there, she instantly and they smacked her from... The Kuma file. She smacked her from behind, and the blood splattered onto the poster? Well... Is that what you're saying? I don't see how that could that's... happen because all the blood landed down yeah, here. Yeah, it's like a major blood splat. I mean, it's not impossible, but that's like a major blood splat. Especially if she, if she was looking that way, right? Right. Then, and the she was probably was from the back, back of the, of the head. head. It wouldn't have splayed in front of her. I mean, unless, unless it was, it was the person, angle. like, they smacked it, and then when they came back, like, she had dropped yeah, to the floor. unless it was at an angle. I mean, yeah. it, it's possible that the blood got on the poster. I can feel the life draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. Shigeru's dead body. Very strange. The more I look at it, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. But, well, but... What? But we're still not sure how he did... Or we're, not, we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's possible that one of us are Genocide Jack, and it doesn't mean that Genocide Jack has to be... Uh... Specifically, a uh, uh, a male, just because the name's Jack. Right. It could be an alias. Well, it is an alias, obviously. We'll give a talk to some of the other people. Uh, we'll start with Sak Sakura and Mondo because they have to stay in here. Right. I use this locker room all the time. Now it has become the site of Chihiro's death. Why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else than Carrie here. <laughs> she was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her, but still. Blood stains all over the floor. Well. I still think she came here on her own by choice. What makes you say that? <laughs> She's been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Perhaps. Tina or myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she's probably avoiding it to then... Right, out of embarrassment. Avoiding it? Mm. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night. However... Perhaps, but it is difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. Exactly, she would have chose someone exactly like her. Probably scrawny, kind of weak, i.e. Toko. Someone like that. But would Toko agree to come? Hmm. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she also would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. And it would have had to be female. Nice. Sakura's account has been loaded into the truth section. Yeah. You got a real complex about being weak. You heard Chikiro talk about it, right? All I need is to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. Well, but does she really get need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. Yeah. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. Cause of Hero's complex. I can't help wondering what it might be. Mondo's account. Okay. Now I believe it's time for us to move on. Huh? Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of this case. That's true, but... Let's go. If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so pushy. I get caught up with the wrong person this time. I was gonna talk to Kyoko, but okay. Well, we're investigating. So this is our next location. Ah, uh, this place is related to the investigation? <laughs> Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? Okay. Let's well. figure out how this is connected. Well, I mean, Gatling gun. Maybe this gun was used- no, impossible. That would sure you hero would be riddled with holes. I need camera. 
Valen's damn right. When the Chiro was being murdered, I bet the Mastermind was just sitting there watching. They know what's happened, and they're still forcing us to go through with this. Panel. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? You have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Mon Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? He has been. Has, has he been, been domesticated? That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, what's up? Oh, uh, well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yep. The card readers have been designed to interface with each of your e handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? There was some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl. Ceiling mounted gathering gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. Ooh, Swiss cheese. <laughs> and the school regulations prohibit anyone from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly correct. So then that means only girls can go in the girls' locker room and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hey, Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? <laughs> Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Chihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in other words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Yes. Such ignorance. Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? <laughs> you should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer's been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. But it doesn't say if the person was standing outside the door that they could do it and let the person go through instead of going in themselves. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else is perfectly fine. Okay, so that once again leads to the fact that anyone could go in there. Precisely. <laughs> I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Chogami family. So you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. <laughs> Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Which implies the fact that there definitely is an accomplice in this case. Well, it implies the fact. Right. It doesn't mean it's true, but... It opens up for the possibility. Yeah. You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then, since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore. They're things. Yep. Get it? Got it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that it's a loophole, but in order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it, so, uh... Why you? So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like <laughs> Byakuya and get your poop together. I'm or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. <laughs> No more questions, figure out the rest on your own damn self. That's fine. Well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental facilities, so I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. Okay, the main hall? That'll help you understand what's going on. Carter's been added to the truth bullets. See, this is a nice investigation. Yeah, but since he knew about the loophole, he puts himself at risk. In fact, well, by if he the was fact guilty, why would he tell you? Yes, but at the same time, that's the same ploy that uh, Mr. Body used in Clue. We came to the main home. So, what are we looking for here? I mean, I have to figure it out for myself. Well. Mailbox. The mailbox here, could there be something inside? It's an e handbook. Like, there's three of them, but why are they doing. What are they doing here? Hmm. So, you finally found them. Uh, do you know these were here, Byakuya? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So, then these three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka. Hmm. You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I really turned out one of the handbooks, and when I did, it's probably Sayaka's. Yeah. You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. Now, now do you understand, understand this key is a loophole that I revealed earlier. 
I'm sorry. No, we're talking to Sink. It's exactly what his voice is like. I feel like I'm starting to get it. Six people talking at the same time. You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. But stealing one isn't. Especially a dead person can't loan out something. Precisely. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. Especially borrowing one that doesn't need it anymore. I see. Yeah, now I understand. Which means anybody well, could have done Well, can't necessarily call us stupid if we didn't know that this was a thing. Well, clearly you weren't astute enough to check. Right. Even though I've checked the mailbox every time I've come in this room. Well, you've checked it, but you haven't checked it since the death. Right. What? Hmm, hold on a second. What's wrong? Very strange. One of the handbooks won't well, turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. So it's Leon's. Not, that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. True. Pummeled with baseballs. Oh, this scene. The memory of it came flooding back. That cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that the mastermind concocted. Cruel, heartless death. You're right. It wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey! Hey! What? That E handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break. It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure. It's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does. I can't hear you. Uh, it's a secret. I wouldn't want to keep you. Want you going? Want you to go breaking any more handbooks? What? The Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm. Uh, hard to say. You know what I think? I think it's. I think his handbook isn't actually broken. But you might ask, how could that be? Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said that it's not broken, but it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. That's fine. Well, I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Broken E handbook. Added to the truth bullet section. There should have been quotations around broken. <laughs> okay, then this should be enough to get things rolling. And seeing as how it's a truth bullet... It must relate to the case somehow. Although I don't see how Leon's would, because Leon's is a guy's uh, e-handbook. Also oh, broken. Broken. And it's broken, so it wouldn't have gotten into the girl's locker room. Unless we're getting truth bullets for future cases, although I don't know truth. Yeah, I don't think we would get a truth bullet for a future case. I, I don't know if they truth extend. Bullet. Exactly. I don't remember. I don't think they would extend, so I'm willing to bet that's not Leon's case. The dead ones get delivered here, but if someone knew that, they could clearly switch theirs out, because there's no rule against them leaving there somewhere. Right. So if someone found the weak point, it would be someone who was willing to sit down and investigate it. Okay, then this should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed your hero. Hmm. To be exact, not quite. Uh, not quite. He's implying that there's multiple people too, probably. What do you mean by that, by Akua? To be exactly, to be exact, not quite. Certainly, I want to reveal your hero's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then you really think? I truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Don't make me repeat Absolutely. Myself. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. Murderous Fiend is Genocide Jack, right? There's nobody else it could be. <laughs> a murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost, attacking They're suddenly and slipping right. away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. 
They said he's killed thousand people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still could one of us really be a demented psychotic killer like that? <laughs> You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. I have something I'll prove it and I can show you. The bloodlust, right. I understand that, but... I'll talk to him again and see if he has anything else to say. Alright. <laughs> Don't make me repeat myself. I have a basis to believe that. I assure you Genocide Jack is one of us. Is there really proof? <laughs> There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. It's all clear now. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed your hero. Evidence that something like that really... Ah, uh, hey you two! <laughs> oh. Wrong voice. Wrong person. Big trouble! Need your help! I don't have time to play with We're you. busy. Leave us alone. It's an emergency! Emergency! Someone else has died. Possibly Toko. Come on, please. You gotta help me. The only she... reason I believe it's Toko is because she was taking care of Toko. Right. So, she probably, like, looked back into the room and all of a sudden Toko's either A, gone, or B, dead. Please. This is a serious emergency. Please, please, you gotta help me. Just calm down, okay, Hina? Need... But, but it's an emergency. Emergency? What happened? Well... Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? Should we do by Yakuya? Very strange. Since Toko, I must admit, I'm intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure you'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, come on, hurry. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. Looks like she headed to the dorms, to Toko's room, most likely. You're right. Okay. What? You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. <laughs> so what's this emergency? So, um... Well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check up on her, you know? See how she was doing? But when we did, it was weird. She refused to come out and kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff? That's fine. She tried talking to ourselves. Yeah, good idea. Hmm. Hurry up and do it. Okay. Might as well give it a shot. Door swung open slowly and silently. Holy crap. An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, focusing a gasp out of me. What? Oh, uh... Nothing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you pulling yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? I won't allow it. Huh? You won't let Genocide Jack have control. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. So. Genocide Jack could, in fact, be the alternate, like, personality of hers. The one that she seems like, oh, I'm all happy, and then all of a sudden she gets all pissy. It could be the fact that she has multiple personalities, and that bad person, kind of like Two-Face from Batman. Right. The bad personality, Big Jack or whatever, gets a hold of her every once in a while. Right. What was that? She's been acting like that the whole time, when I rang a little while ago. I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. Um... It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down the door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side, I couldn't even budge it. Togo was scared enough to even bar her door. Does she think the same thing as Byakuya? Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really merged Hero? Is that why Toko's so scared? Or maybe she's trying to keep herself in. Although, she could just move the stuff out from the front of the door. But... Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. 
Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Yeah, it would be Byakuya. Because she likes him. Hey, Byakuya. You think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean? That's fine. Sure, whatever. You gotta talk to her? Wow, guess you'd be nice when you wanted to. Stood in front of the door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. A few moments. What do you want? You're all so annoying. Ah, Bakula. 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 Oh, he said his name. We could have cl clarified what it sounds like. Bakula sounds like the Bakula. worst kaiju. Oh no, it's Godzilla versus Bakula. I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack ever control ever again. Have control ever again. And with that, the door slammed shut. Bakula. Even Byakuya couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on. Hey, Byakuya. What was Toko, Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. Looking suspicious, friend. Looking like Toko and him were accomplices. But... Stop. If I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well then, let's go. Continue our investigation. Uh, waiting for a reply, Byakuya sped away. Byakuya! And hurried to catch up. Let's continue our investigation. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked, but he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept walking towards his destination. Brought him in front of a certain room. The library? <laughs> Come well, on, let's go in. Okay, what's so weird about this room? Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat myself. It's probably what he was reading. There's no point in checking there. We need to find real clues. Uh, certain incident? No. Well, don't forget there is a The laptop's missing. That's weird. There is a stuck door there. Oh, true. We've never been in that room, though. Is that an actual separate room? Inside of this door the archive right <laughs> hurry up and go inside yeah I never went in there oh here Let's well we do have a map it all makes sense once you're inside okay whoa there's so many books and files so much dust too so in other words I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust Okay, so I'm guessing we're probably looking for something that's been used recently. So I'm gonna look at the few places where the books are messed up. Stuff tight with files without really thinking about a big one at random. <laughs> ah, you have sharp eyes indeed to select that file. Hmm? That's right. That's the report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept in the National Library. It won't be this declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for, pre for peeking at it. Okay, without making sound, I have to turn the files to the shelf. Okay, I was right about one point. The three areas where the books are messed up is where I can actually look. Stuff in the shelf, one of them, all these That's things. Enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the, the Diet or something? No, I mean the ones with real power. This secret council controlling everything from the shadows. Yanuminati confirmed. The secret council. If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There's some very interesting people in there. Oh, so he's definitely taking a look then. You're just kidding, right? <laughs> Am I? I'll just let it go for now. Well, I mean, he's the top project. He's probably read these files before. 
if they're top secret. Right. <laughs> He's probably one of the only people who has access to it. If they can't look you through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person would never want to look at. Be careful. Well, what do you mean? All those files there are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Which is probably what you wanted me to look at because we want to look at different photos from Genocide Jack. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of things you'd expect to leave. Oh. There is something in that top right corner, but I can't... Oh, it's just the camera. See the surveillance camera here. That is shocking. A little few other things to look at. Files on the floor. With a lamp. It's a desk lamp? Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byakuya using in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. Nice. Got a problem with this lamp, man? No. I thought we were looking at the books on the floor. It's a wooden box, it's empty. Although judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. Extension cord, huh? Hmm. So, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? Mm, no. The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. <laughs> it's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? I mean, this can't be for real, right? Such That's your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that. It's just, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but I mean, there's just so much. How could anyone have put all of this together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much Hope Peaks truly wields. Or perhaps, <laughs> the mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Right, so different ways to murder people, perhaps. Which, once again, leads us to suspect you, Byakuya. It's no use I can keep up with all this, it's just too unreal. <laughs> What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What? What do you mean, usually? Usual? Normal? Ordinary? Simple? Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? The documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, so there is no doubt. Hold on a second, you're saying you've read all these documents more than once? But all this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why? <laughs> My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? <laughs> Members of the Togami family have access to a variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So in other I already words, told you, there's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family is a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I'd like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim, without a doubt, the materials gathered here are the real thing. It's beyond believing or not believing. The Akua is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports has always been a hobby of mine, ever since I was little. Excellent mental exercise. I've solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the reports. And among all of those reports, one of my recent favorites, the Genocide Jack case. As you talk, Byakula grabbed a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack case has been compiled. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin with, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second 
is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Blood rust is blood lust is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended. Exactly the same as what happened to Shihiro. <laughs> Save your surprise. The best part is yet to come. Hmm. For the second characteristic, where the victims are su suspended. The only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and their higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? Hmm. In other words, no one on the news, no one online, Nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Therefore, he's saying it had to have been the real Genocide Jack or someone related to police. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. And no one hears a cop or knows about it other than him and Genocide Jack. Unless he is Genocide Jack. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse. Definitely suspended. Her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. And the word bloodlust is there. So how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? It's probably not by chance. That would be a lot of work. That's right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other the words... culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. In other words... That's right, there's the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then Genocide Jack really is. Such a brutal fiendish killer really is walking around among us? <laughs> interesting. Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? It's <laughs> easy, I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. What, to take the file from him? 